What's going on coders and welcome to episode 4 of our calendar service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about creating events. So the top 8 methods that I have picked out are create event, create all day event, create event from description, add guest, set my status, set location, set description, and set color. So there are a lot more methods, but I think these are going to be the top eight most useful. So let's jump into the code and put these methods to work. In order to create an event, you need an instance of a calendar object. So that's what we're getting right here, calendar calendar. We're storing it in a constant called cal, and now we can use it. So let's say cal, and the first method that we're going to use is create event. So you can see we have two options right here. The required parameters are title, start time, and end time, and then you can include optional parameters, which is included in this JavaScript object called options. So let's, uh, oops, let's use the second one right here, and we'll give it a title. So all events need to have a title. We'll say my awesome party. You need to give it a start time. Again, this is going to be a JavaScript date, so we need to instantiate it with the new keyword. And then we'll say it's going to start on 2020, February. Uh, the date is the 28th, and it's going to be at 3 p.m. So this is going to have to be 15 for 3 p.m. Again, this is military time. So it needs to be 15 uh, for 3 p.m. And then the end time is going to be new date. Uh, we'll just end it one hour after that. So we'll say 16 o'clock, also known as 4 p.m. Great, so if we just ran it like this and we got rid of these options right here, then this would work, but this would be a pretty lame party because, again, there's going to be no guests, there's no location, there's no description. In fact, it's just a title and two dates. So if we want to add guests or location or anything like that, we can include those within a JavaScript object. So again, this needs to be curly braces, and we'll hit a semicolon, and we'll drop two lines. And I have listed down here all of the key value pairs that you can include in this object. There's description, location, guests, and send invites. So let's just showcase two of them for now. Let's say location and guests. Um, actually, before I do that, I want to mention that this send invites is, is a Boolean that specifies whether to send invitation emails. So if you don't specify this, it's going to default to true, and it won't send any emails to your guests. So if that is something you want, then just don't include send invites or just keep it how it is. But if it if you do want to send your email invites, you need to include this send invites key or this property. Okay, anyways, let's go back to location. So location is a string. Let's just say at my house. And then you also and then let's also include guests. So if we say guests, this takes there this uh, this value is a string. So it's not an array or anything, it's all contained within a string. So let's invite our college email address. And uh, if we just sent this out just like this, however, um, it will only be sent to the college email address. So my account, davidtheweiss7 at gmail.com, will not be on the guest list. For instance, if you look at here, lunch and basketball, you can see that when David, uh, this, this college email address, organized this, he was automatically added to this event and he was automatically said that he was going, right? Um, however, that is not going to be the case if you create your own event. You have to specify your own uh, email address if you want to be included on the invite, which is kind of different. I mean, it allows for more flexibility, but um, it's kind of just something you have to remember. So if we save it, now and we run it and it ran successfully if we look back at our calendar then here we go we have my awesome party that just appeared it's from three to four it's at my house and we can see we have both me david the 7 and the college email address both of them have been added to the guest list i do want to mention though that i haven't responded whether i'm going or not even though i created this message or this i mean this uh this calendar invite which is a little bit different than if you were to do it manually again. If you did it manually, it will automatically say that you are going. When you do it programmatically, you have to specify that you, your RSVP. So uh, yeah, so let's get out of that. And now let's showcase 
the next method, which is create all day events. So let's say cal dot create all day event, and you can see we have four options right here. Uh, two of those are just uh, including the optional parameters, which are going to be exactly the same as the optional parameters of your create event method. Uh, but then the first and the third option are if you want to create an all day event that spans multiple days, you would give it a start date and an end date. If you just want to create an all day event that was just one day long, you would just use this method. So let's use this method just because I think uh, the other one is pretty intuitive. I don't need to showcase that. We'll say this is titled my birthday and then we'll give it a date. We'll just say it's today, which it's not really, but let's just say it is. So I'm going to instantiate a new date object with a new keyword. It's going to slice off the time and just look at the date. So that's the 28th right here. Or just look at the day that is. All right, so if we save that now and we run it, run successfully, that's great. And now you can see right here, we have a new event listed as an all day event because it's in this top bar right here. And it's titled my birthday. Great, from Friday, or it's at Friday, February 28th. Excellent. So let's uh, now move on to a method that I don't really use that often, but I thought it, when I first learned it, I was pretty uh, excited and is pretty intrigued by it. So I'm just going to showcase that now. Uh, it's called create event from description. So this takes in a string called description. And this description is basically um, the title of the event and the time of the event, but it's written in modern English, if you will. It's like, it's, it's written just as if you were to speak to an Android or something like that. So you can say, Create an event from description, and you can say um, lunch with buddies um, Saturday at oops Saturday at 3 p.m. to or let's say Saturday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., which is an extremely late lunch, but let's just give it a go. So this is written in modern plain English, right? Lunch with buddies Saturday. Like it would be as if you're telling AppScript, hey, create an event uh, and it's lunch with buddies Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. And AppScript, I think will do some like machine learning uh, algorithm or something and they'll look at this and they'll be like, all right, let's create that. So if we hit save now and we hit run, ran fine. And if we look back into our calendar now, here we go. We have lunch with buddies from 3 to 4 p.m and it created it just like that, and all we had to do was just speak modern English to it. So this isn't very systematic, I don't think, but um, when I first saw that method, I was, I was uh, pretty excited to learn it, so even though you may not use it, it's still a good one to know. All right, so now we have created events, and we created all the events, and we created event descriptions, but now we're gonna look at some of the methods on the event object itself. So I have something on my clipboard and I'm going to uncomment it. So let's say we create an event, but we only we don't include any of the optional parameters here, right? Because we only get these four optional parameters or these four properties. So let's just say we create an event, my awesome party, gave it a date, gave it this new date right here. Um, again, it's from three to four, just like this one, three to four. But then you can also include a lot of the metadata or a lot of the data of that event through event uh, methods. So you can say, you can add guests this way. You can just say, after you have an event, you could say dot add guest, and then just add the guests through uh, the parameters. So you can say add guest, my college email address. You can say add guest, me. And again, this is, this is a chaining. You can chain these methods together. Uh, you can say set my status, and then this takes in a guest status enum, and the options for that are yes, no, maybe, um, and then you probably wouldn't want to do invited or owner because those are already implied. You can set the location, which takes a string. You can set the description, which takes also a string, and then you can set the color of the event. So this takes in an event color enum, and then let's just say uh, move right here. And then if we now save it, and again, you can add a lot more methods to this, but these are, I think, the, the top methods. So if you save it and then you run it, and then you look back into the calendar, 
you can see that now we have this one right here, which is kind of like a purple color. And then we do have both of these guests invited. I've said yes to it. It's at my house. It's an awesome party. And um, so yeah, this is just one other way of of creating events. You don't have to include all of this metadata within the optional parameters. You can just add it as methods like this. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't forget to uh, comment below. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, but if you liked it, then please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.